Hey y'all, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for tuning in to what's going to be a what's new from e.l.f. haul sort of thing. I recently posted two videos talking about what's new at the drugstore. These are brands that are kind of specific to the drugstore like L'Oreal, uh, Wet n Wild, maybe a little bit of Maybelline. I forget. There have been so many new products out, but you can go check those out by clicking the eye or going to the description bar below and clicking the links there. This video is going to be exclusive to e.l.f. products. There are quite a few that they've recently sent me. Actually, not even so recently. It's taken me forever to get through these products. I think they sent all of this stuff to me before the new year. So I haven't been trying them all for that long, but the skincare I've been going at for a while, the palette I'm gonna talk about here I've been using for a bit. And so basically, as with any what's new at the blank video, I not only like to tell you what I got, but also kind of show it off, demo it, give my thoughts on it, basically a little mini review. So with all that being said, clearly there's gonna be a lot of information in this video, so let's just go ahead and dive in. First, I wanna start with skincare. They've sent me two new products. The first is the Micellar Cleansing Water, and cleansing waters just have a funky spot in my, in my heart, in my skincare routine. I don't know what it is about them. Actually, I do. So with any Micellar Water, whether it's the e.l.f. or others that I've tried, I never find they get my skin clean. It always seems like they leave a layer of residue, and even when I go to like double cleanse my skin with normal soap or cleanser or whatever, there's always additional product that comes off. So I never really feel like this can ever be a one and done product for me. And more often than not, I can think of one exception. It's the dual phase water from Garnier, I believe it is, but most of them can't get my eye makeup off. Specifically mascara and eyeliner, like in the waterline and super close to my eye, they just can't get the job done. And so I find I need to go in with a makeup remover, like an oil-based makeup remover anyway, and then I definitely need to double cleanse. Long story short, I didn't have high hopes for this product, just given my experience with micellar waters in general in the past. I have to say it performs very similar to those. Like it definitely removes my facial makeup. I don't wear anything so heavy heavy duty or set so firmly or or well that it, it this won't take it off but I do notice that it doesn't quite get all my mascara off I have to go in with a little bit of extra you know eye makeup remover or cleanse double cleanse triple cleanse to get my eye makeup off it's not super heavy duty cleansing water and like with any cleansing water I do feel like there's a little bit of residue and so when I go in for a double cleanse I'm still seeing you know additional dirt makeup whatever is on my face at the end of the day comes off with that second cleanse and the other thing that might be a turnoff for some people is the scent here. This is pretty strongly fragranced and not it definitely smells fresh and not chemically, but it is very strong. And I know a lot of people, sometimes me included, depending on you know how my allergies are, if it's really cold out, it can and sensitize my skin. And so although I'm not typically sensitive to fragrances, when my skin is prone to irritation, a, fr a scent like this can make that flare up. So just something to be aware of. Not a must have product for me. If micellar cleansing waters are a must have for you, this might be one to look into but like I said, given my lack of love for them at the get-go, I didn't really think this was gonna be a real win for me. Next up is the Prep and Hydrate Balm. This is, it comes off clear, but it looks like kind of a teal or turquoise looking gel stick. And it's supposed to, it's a clear cooling balm that helps hydrate and prep skin for makeup application. And I have to say, it's really refreshing the way it cools. I have combo skin, and so I do tend to be a little bit weird and finicky about the kind of hydrating products I'll put in my skin because sometimes they will just make my T-zone go crazy. Other times, they won't be enough to hydrate my dry patches. And so for now, for the winter, I've been primarily testing this. It's been only in the past few days has it like reached 70 in January in the middle of the day. But before that, it was kind of cold, kind of blustery for as cold and blustery as Texas can get, but relatively speaking, it had an opportunity to kind of test my combo skin in a, you know, colder, drier climate, and I have to say it wasn't really enough for it. I think this is going to be good, especially for the summer when I really am not looking for a super heavy moisturizer. I need something that isn't going to produce excess oil, excess shine, and the fact that it really does cool upon application is going to be super refreshing, I think, in the summer, especially in this Texas heat. Um, but not really a product for now for me, but it's definitely something, maybe I'll do a second take on this product, or it might just end up in a favorites video in, you know, a summer month coming up ahead. Uh, not a must-have for me, but I definitely feel like it's going to play a bigger role for in my makeup routine in the warmer months. On to the makeup. First up is a full face palette. I haven't seen one of these since they, in fact, they might even still make them, but one of the first 
uh, bigger purchases I made from e.l.f. Actually, it was a legit big purchase. It was like 15 or 20 bucks at the time was one of those where the eyeshadows folded out and it was its own makeup compact. Let me know if you remember those in the comments below or if they still have them in the comments below. That was the last time I remember buying and using a full face set from e.l.f. So I was really inter just interested to see how this one would perform. This is the Smoky Matte um, all over face palette, I guess. I'll put the full name of the product down below. They don't ever or they rarely put the full name of the product. It's just kind of the shade you have or whatever. This is the Smoky Matte palette. And so inside you get three eyeshadow shades. I applied the first middle dusty plum color all over my lid up into my crease. Then I put the lighter mauve shade up into my brow bone. And then I smoked out the outer corner with the matte it's not a super, super inky black. It's kind of a softer, smokier black. So I don't think you should be too scared if you're not like a deep matte black person. This is definitely a softer, smokier kind of deep matte. And altogether, I was really impressed with how smooth they applied for mattes. Like sometimes with inexpensive matte shades, you can get some skipping and just some flakiness and texture. They don't really flatter the texture of your skin. These are really buttery. They glide on smoothly and evenly. Um, and together the shades I think are make a really beautiful looking smoky eye. My one complaint is just the thickness of the strips. I wonder if they could have done um, kind of them going the opposite like horizontal here to get a little bit more width to them. I even using what I wouldn't consider a super fluffy brush for the lid and crease found it a little bit hard to get into the shade that I used it for and so a little bit of extra room there would have been nice but Besides that, performance is on point. Then there are the face powders here. You get both a matte bronzer slash contour and a matte blush. And I was really impressed with these as well as far as application goes. Once again, the product is smooth. It doesn't skip on the skin. It's easily built up for pigment. It's definitely a little limiting in shade. I think it could, with a super light touch, this could be used on fair skin, light skin, medium skin, but then beyond medium, you might have a little bit of an issue building, especially the bronzer here up. The blush is very nicely pigmented. I think that would translate well to all shade ranges and skin tones, but the bronzer might prove to be a little less versatile in the deeper skin tones. And then over here you get two lip shades. They aren't protected by anything, so I'm as I'm looking at it now I can already see I have blush fragments that have flung into them, so that's an unfortunate side effect of including any lip product in with your powder products. I generally like for them to have a cover, but for the price tag here, I mean, it, it makes sense that there isn't that quality in the packaging. The lip products themselves are kind of, they can be built up to a more opaque lipstick, but for the most part, they are kind of a sheer pigmented, balmy product applied to the lips. They maintain that balmy sheen, but they are super duper pigmented. And then you get two of them. One is a beautiful berry shade and the other is a deep grape shade, both of which complement all the colors in this palette. Overall, I'm just really impressed with how this is really a face in a palette. You could take this on the go. You might be missing a highlight if that's something you like to wear every day. You need your mascara, foundation, concealer, but pretty for the most part, you take this and the rest of your face is done. Really minimal makeup at its finest and the quality inside is pretty awesome. I would recommend this. Next up are some highlights. These are shimmer highlighting powders. There are three shades, but I'm gonna quickly put down one of these because it broke in transit and has been an absolute mess ever since. So I'll show it in the swatches that I put up here, but I'm only gonna be holding these two. The one that I'm wearing today is in the shade Starlight Glow, and it's in, I mean, a classic, it's super poppin' too, but it's a pretty classic kind of yellow champagne, not super warm. I think it's gonna be a flattering yellow. I don't want yellow to deter anyone, but it is tends to be a warmer yellower leaning as opposed to a pinker champagne. And so that is the lightest shade. Then there is the next kind of deeper shade, and this is Starlight Glow. And it's actually not so much deeper as it is that more pink leaning champagne. Then there is Bronze Glow. This is an absolutely beautiful highlighter. Great. On me for an eyeshadow, it's a little too deep for a highlight shade, but for medium deep skin tones, I mean, oh my goodness, how beautiful. And what I really love about these is that the shimmer is so fine. I, I almost don't like that they call them shimmer highlights because they're just, they're like, pearly or just the shimmer, the pigment is so finely milled here that you really don't get any distinct shimmer. It's just like this beautiful, even glow. 
on the cheeks that's really buildable. You can use a dense fluffy brush like I did to apply my highlight here today, or you can use a more diffused brush to kind of not make a highlight that is so in your face, but who wants that? I'm kidding. Rock that if you want. It's not me, but if it's you, you do you. Um, what's great about these is that they can go either way. And I did want to point out how they might stack up to the other highlight palette that e.l.f. has come out with. Again, another favorite. They're kind of killing it in the highlight department. It's like, why go for a high end when they have so many good shades to pick from? So this is uh, the Illuminating Palette. Highly recommend you get this. If, you, if you're a highlight lover, you want some variety, and you don't want to break the bank, this is is one of my favorites from e.l.f. period. And none of the shadows in here are duplicated in the single shade. So just for reference, I did kind of cross check there to make sure if you have this and you're worried about getting one of these and duplicating, don't. They are totally new shades that aren't in this palette. But if you're, I mean, you should definitely check this palette out if you don't have it, because it's awesome. And then the last product is a lip stain. It's what I'm wearing today and I wanted to because look at how intimidating that looks in the tube. It looks like this inky purpley black, which I would love if it was super opaque. I am not afraid of a deep, bold lip. But I did want to show you that it's not that intimidating. It is very much sheer on the lips. It is called the Aqua Beauty Radiant Gel Lip Stain. This is in the shade Misty Mulberry, and there are six total shades in the range, everywhere from light neutral to oranges, reds, purples, obviously. Um, and I really liked how this shears out across the lips. It's a sheer lip stain, but man, is it pigmented. The one thing I will say is that it's, it's comfortable, but it's still a little bit drying to the lips. The pigment lasts for a while. And unlike a liquid lipstick, you don't have to worry about flaking or that, you know, kind of chunky, uneven wear, but it definitely does still wear away at the center of my lips slowly throughout the day. The wear time I would say is about four and a half to five hours. And at the end of that time, if I haven't applied any lip balm, which is going to take that wear time down a little bit more, my lips are definitely dry as a desert at the end of the day after wearing this. So definitely requires some lip conditioning in between wear, but I just really love how pigmented and yet sheer and transfer proof it is. The other thing I want to mention, as you lick your lips throughout the day, you will get a slight hint of like, something that doesn't taste natural, if you know what I'm saying. It's not overwhelming, but there's definitely like whatever doesn't sink into your lips to stain them sits on the top. And as you lick your lips throughout the day, a little bit of that'll come off and you'll just taste a little something like not overpowering, not enough to bother me. But if you are sensitive to those tastes, just want to give you a heads up because it's something that I notice from here, especially, and not something that I've noticed from other like felt tip lip stains, things like that. It definitely leaves a residue on the top of the lips. But for $4, would still definitely recommend it if you are into long-lasting lip stains that aren't the super popular liquid lipsticks that you need to worry about kind of cracking on the lips and reapplying and clumpage and all that kind of stuff. This makes it a little bit more fuss-free, but you do have to worry about the taste and the drying. So just something to consider if you are considering these. And that's it. Those are all the new e.l.f. products, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think of any of these products, any and all of these that you might have tried in the comments below. Whether you like them, if they're not for you, let us know why, because it always helps other people in addition to me. Would love to hear that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys!